Hey everyone, this is Alan Helton from Memento. Today, we're going to be talking about Acorn Hunt, a game built on Memento to help illustrate how you can store game data inside of a cache. The very first thing we're going to talk about are all of the different entities and how we use Memento Cache to save all the different types of data elements. Now, one of the objectives that we had when designing Acorn Hunt was that we didn't want to use a persistent data store at all. So all the information that goes to and from players inside of Acorn Hunt is stored completely inside Memento Cache. All the data in the game is all ephemeral, meaning it's short-lived. And when a game is over, it goes away completely. There's no need to store things like in-game chat messages for long periods of time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to dissect how we've built and assembled all the information inside of Acorn Hunt to show how you can do it too. In order to facilitate the easiest data structures, we've actually taken advantage of all the different collection data types and the other types of storage that Memento Cache has to offer. So if you look here, this top row in our caches area are all the different top level caches. Think of these almost as a database table. And underneath are the types of entities that are stored within each one of these caches. In our user cache, we store dictionary items. Now, a dictionary is essentially a, an object store. It allows you to get and set uh, multiple key value pairs related to one specific entity. So we're storing user information in here, uh, cache key on their username, and we store information like the current game that they're in the WebSocket connection and what level they are. We have a player cache and inside of the player cache, we have set items, set collections, store unique sets of information, meaning I can't have any duplicate values inside. So we're actually using this to store player lists inside of each game. The chat cache is used to store messages that are sent back and forth between all the players per each game. This is built on a list collection data type. A list persists a chronological list of messages that were sent in each game. Of course, we have the game cache. So we have a, a dictionary, which remember is an object that we can get and set key value pairs. And so we store information like what map are the players playing? How long is the game? What's the name of the game? And is it a rank match? Inside of the game cache, we also store another data type, uh, which is a set, uh, which is essentially just a list of games. We want to see at any point in time all the games that are active, so we, we save them off in this list cache item. We have a connection cache, which stores WebSocket connections. So we store uh, two different types. We store all the connections that are connected to a specific game. And we also store a single cache items for the connection ID that maps back to the username uh, that's behind the connection. Lastly, we have the leaderboard cache. Uh, which stores a sorted set of scores for each person. We're not actually going to talk about that today. In our demo, we're going to be focusing on the in-game chat portion of Acorn Hunt. Now below, before we actually do the demo and take a look, we're going to take a look briefly at the architecture. Now this is built on AWS using a serverless architecture. It has a API gateway WebSocket, has a Lambda authorizer on top to authenticate the calls coming in. And it has five WebSocket endpoints or actions backed by a Lambda function. And each one of these Lambda functions connects to a subset of the caches. So we have connect, join game, send message, leave game, and disconnect. Over on the right-hand side, we have a REST API to uh, create games and get lists of games. Now, again, these are using Memento cache behind the scenes. It's not using a persistent data store. So games in Acorn Hunt are short-lived. They may last 30 minutes. They may last an hour. They may last one minute. The point to remember here is that at the end of the game, all the data is wiped out because we don't need to save it. So here I have two browser windows open to represent two different user sessions. On the left-hand side, we're going to sign in as Honey Badger. And when we sign in, we get a list of the games that are currently active. We're going to go ahead and, and create a new game. It's going to be Acorn City. 
So we create the game and we join the chat. On the right hand side, we're going to sign in as Mo the Squirrel. There we go. And you can see that Acorn City is in here because we've saved it into our cache. We click sign in and we're going to join. And you can already see that there's messages coming in down here at the bottom. I can send messages via that send message WebSocket action. And it pops over here into the other chat. And as you can see, whenever I hit send, it hits that WebSocket. It pulls that data out of Memento serverless cache and then broadcasts a message out to everybody that's connected. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code and see how this all works. Over on the left-hand side, we have all of our Lambda functions broken down into individual folders. So whenever I go in and I join a game, which was one of the very first things that we did when I hit that join button, we can come in here and we can see this is written in, in JavaScript. Uh, the very first thing we're going to do is create our Memento cache client. We're going to validate that all these different caches exist. So we do that. We fetch the game just to see if it exists. We're doing a little bit of validation. And then we come down here. And in parallel, we're going to update all of these different caches. So we're updating the player cache to say, okay, we're going to add this person to that game. We're going to say that this WebSocket connection is now associated with this game. We're going to set the current game ID for the user inside of that dictionary to the provided game. And then we're going to send a message out to everybody that's already in that game that says that the person joined the chat. The next thing we're going to look at is send message. And in here, what we're going to do, it's a, it's a very simple endpoint. So we're going to pull the connection. Basically, we're going to get the username from the connection ID in that WebSocket out of the a connection cache. We're going to use that username, which we used as the cache key in the dictionary to get the current game ID. We're going to infer the game identifier when a person makes a call. And then what we're going to do is we're going to save a new message in here. And we're going to hit this broadcast message shared helper function uh, that's in our Lambda layer. Let's take a look at that. The broadcast message function is going to do a couple of things. Now, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to add the message uh, to the list in our chat cache. Now, remember, a list inside of Memento cache is an ordered list. So we're pushing something in so it can be saved chronologically. Then we're going to fetch all of the WebSocket connections associated with that game. And then down here, we're going to iterate over all of them and use the AWS SDK to push the data from our message to every one of those connections. And then what we do on the user interface is we update the, we update the chat window accordingly. And all that happens within a fraction of a second. We're making multiple calls to Memento. We are then turning around and updating the user interface, and it's happening in an instant. Well, that's it for this demo. I hope this has inspired you to make your own game. And just remember that you don't need a persistent data store for everything. All right, this is Alan Helton. Have a good one.